Welcome back, you're here with Bravo playing Dyson Sphere program. This is episode 6 and we're going to be covering the Dyson Sphere. So I'll be setting up the launches, the vertical launching silos here on this planet closest to the star, Zub and Al Ganubi 1. And I'll set up, show you how we um, you set up a Dyson Sphere using the um, the Dyson Swarm and Dyson Sphere interface. So I have about 2,000 small carrier rockets in this interstellar logistics station and I'm probably just going to put silos out here. So I'm only going to do five. Five silos for now. And that should keep it fairly slow with room to optimize that so I normally set them up like this is it the other way sideways So the reason I set them up this way is so when I build another five launching silos I can build them right next to it and carry them through to the other one. So this one I run in the opposite direction. way they come in off this main line, fill this one up, put them out onto this one, start filling up on the other side. And you can continue that right through. Like keep going runs along. vertical launching silo here and click open editor but I'll just bring the rockets out first okay now they're being supplied with the rockets so I'll click open editor Now we have to make a shell. So over here on the left, you dice and shell, you can click one. This is your first your first layer. And in here you can you can edit it or delete it. Okay, add new layers. Over here on the left it says You got blueprints here for it as well. So usually I just start with the basic one. And then uh, you can start filling it out how you want it using these nodes. So down here it says build plan node. 
Okay, you can just directly click line to line like that. How I first did it was I built the nodes individually like this. And then I built these. These are straight paths, okay, where these are curved, so I like using the um, curved ones mostly, especially around the top. But for the middle section here, we might just run normal. So you can just keep on clicking around like this, and get it complete. And you can make them smaller as well, so two squares. Two squares is the limit. And I think the more nodes you have, the more power you get. But just for setting up the first run, I'm just going to run like this. Okay, so the more nodes you have, the more rockets it's going to be. And so once they're built, your dice and swarm, the solar sails, will start to be integrated into these nodes and filling these sections. So it's um can be quite tedious depends on how you want to design it. Like I said, just for this first spring I'm just gonna get a basic setup. So once you've got all your nodes and your paths built, pathways, which is easy in between the nodes you can then fill it out using this dicing shell button so build plan shell in here you'll have seven you'll have seven op options to choose from and you can just put these however you want there's nothing specific you don't have to have them a certain way just whatever you think you like the most so because I'm on, I haven't seen these new ones on the end here like I haven't really built with these before I'm going to just chuck a whole bunch of different ones in just because why not and we'll see them get built and then we can have a look from there so these first couple look cool I usually just like the basic one this second last one looks pretty cool and I might decide to use that on future plan builds so I'll just build a bunch of different ones and then have a look from there. Cool, done. So that's just selecting that, choosing which one you like, and then putting it inside these sections in the Dyson shell. So your rockets are going to carry parts to these nodes. As you can see, they sort of land in it. Once the paths and pathways are built, the Dyson swarm will then be integrated into these nodes and they start filling these patches. Now, you can see the rest of the sphere is red. And that's because of the technology tree. So if you click close out of this window, you can just get back to that by pressing Y. There it is. And you can see the rockets coming from the planet over their left, flying to their nodes. And this is where they're getting launched from. So they're actually pretty big. I was surprised how big the rockets were. I was expecting maybe half that size. Because in here, it's like, oh yeah, little small carry rocket okay no worries and then you see them on the belt here oh yeah small carry rocket no worries and then they get loaded up here and they're, <laughs> they're huge but it looks really good yeah so they're gonna fly up and you can see them taking off there I'll just click map sorry so there they wait for some more to get fired off here we go There goes another five. You can see them flying out to their nodes. Now you can see the nodes just over there to the right. Okay. Now another way you could do it is you just click on the star. Oh, sorry. Click the click that. And look at that. And zoom in on your star, and you can see them being built in space in orbit around the star here. Up here to the right. So the rockets will just keep building, 
keep building that for you. So, to get, as you saw in, in the plan here, the Dyson shell, this is the first layer, and this is all red. Okay, now to improve that in your technology tree, you've got your Dyson sphere stress system. It's only at level 2. So let's load up level 3 and we can get more. And obviously it's going to take a while, 3,000 of each. Not to mention it's going to use the resources from building these rockets to do the research, but that's fine. So we'll let that do that. Now, you can set other layers. So you can add a layer here. And once you've created that layer, you can have it on different angles, as you can see. So in my other star system in this galaxy, in Galaxy Bravo, I'm going to do a ring system where I do smaller versions of this one I've just built and do them staggered like this and keep building multiple layers so it looks like like an actual big Dyson sphere with rings rotating around the star around that A type star so I wanted to just show you in here you got these in, in, these radical grids down here okay so this is your canvases of how you build so at the moment we're on just this basic radical grids canvas but you can change it to geometric grids I've used this one it's pretty cool um, I built up quite sophisticated Dyson sphere on another playthrough and it took a long long time to build it because I built it in small triangles so I was going uh, I think I was going about that big around the entire sphere and it took a very long time to plan all that out but just showing you that this is another way you can build pretty cool Dyson spheres with this one you know doing the ring system even you can you can have just like a triangle layout like this all the way around okay you're going to be getting quite a few nodes in that and you've got this one the geometric grid too again it's quite smaller but it's in a way it's um, proportioned so you can see they're just large triangles across the surface of it where the geometric grid one is sort of um, like triangles broken up into smaller sections okay with these little with these um, little pentagons here so finally building a cell Dyson sphere cell here okay and as you can see the Dyson swarm has now been consumed into these nodes and that's because I've built a couple paths here so these swarms are going to fill out these sections in the shell So with the other, the last one here, Geometric Grid 3, again, they're larger triangles across the surface, okay, with these small triangles in here. So the other one was Pentagon with the five, here, yeah, five sides, okay, triangles. Then your Geometric Grid 2, which are these little squares, okay. Again, bigger triangles in these grids. And the last one is a lot larger with triangles in the sections here. So it's totally up to you how you ever you want to design it or play it. This one is a bit odd, the last one. I usually like um, this one, Geometric Grids one. This is the triangle size but again there's no middle section so obviously this is the middle this green section that you can see I can build on 
but it doesn't have an actual middle one. Where if you go to the the gradical grids, obviously this line here, grid line, is your center, and you can work off that. But I mean, you can design it however you want. So I'll probably just delete that one for now because I just want to do a Dyson sphere. So once the technology is done, I can set up for the next stage and I'll show you that. What I might do now is just some optimization because I'm not building these solar sails quick enough. I'm going to need a lot more uh, graphene. So I have my other stars here. So it goes in my crystal over here. I'm afraid I set it up. Actually, don't have. A label on this one, so I might go over there and have a look. And let this just build. So I normally put on my planets a label in the name of what's been generated on that planet. I don't have anything set up here, so I'll just come in and have a look at what's being made over here. Looks like just all the basics, as well as the organic oh, optical grafting crystal. So I might just head over and optimize the mining station over here because now I have these advanced mining machines. They're a lot more efficient and they drone themselves so I don't have to do so I might just put one down anyway, just to help boost this. So in here you can set this to storage. Okay. And send it out on its on the belt. There we go. These things are awesome. So like I'll build one just on uh, an empty node. So over here. Okay. And when you put it down, I just rotate it so I can hopefully get all of them, just like that. So you only need one, and if I need two, I usually just put a normal mining machine down to pick up the slack, and then I feed that. Like I, let's, actually, I'll just show you really quickly on this one. So if I couldn't get all the nodes in on a big patch, and say there was this one left out here, I just put a little mining machine like that, and then I would feed that into the advanced mining machine. Okay, and run power. Righto. And now this is on supply. So you can just leave it stock right up. I usually just drop these down to 4500. Again, that's all I can just, if I need to lose space in my inventory, I can just pick up the copper out of my inventory and I can just put it straight in there. If this is maxed out, I can't put anything in it. So I usually always, as you've seen on my other um, logistic station tutorials I've, sh I've shown in my previous episodes, I always put it down a little bit. So 4500 is plenty. That'll supply. So drones will come directly to this and pick it directly up from the mining machine. I don't need to now build planetary logistics stations. So this planet's set up for, oh yeah, see I've started doing this over here, well, I don't need to do this anymore. Ok, 
Okay, I can just build these. Got it. Drop that down to 4500. Provide some power. Done. So much easier than building logistic stations. Um, but you have to do logistic stations until you have the advanced miners. There we go. Easy. So much easier. So much more simple. And drones will now just, as long as this is on supply, they'll just pick it up from here. So. I don't really, I'll come back to this planet and finish off setting it all up, but for now I just want to go find. I need to set up something to take this fire ice from this planet. That has fractal silicon and fire ice. So I might go over here on this planet. So let's just change the name really quick. So this is just basic supply. Plus optical crafting crystal. So OGC, I just put to save space, press enter. Now you can see in this system it's just name, name, named its normal name, but then the planet is called Basic Supply plus OGC, which is optical crafting crystal. Basic Supply is all of your basics, so um, where my stations are, I'll show you really quickly. So I don't send the ores off world, I'll send the ores to these refinery setups I have and I'll refine it all into its basics, basic items. Oh, oops, what have I done here? Didn't mean that. There we go. So this will start doing titanium now. Titanium ingots. So I do magnets, iron ingots, copper ingots, silicon ingots. Oh, is it pure silicon? Sorry, a high purity silicon, titanium ingots, glass, and bricks, stone bricks. And then I put those into these interstellar logistics stations and I put them all on supply. So this planet will just make all of these items and supply them off world. So my home base or anywhere else can just demand and this will then supply it. So the grafting crystal I just supply directly, I don't craft that into anything because some buildings require that, um, just raw, um, as well as chasma crystals need it raw. So I don't make the chasma crystal here and then supply that, I'll just supply all the um, grafting crystal and then the other planets that are making chasma crystals or um, automated structures such as the advanced mining machine will um, you will request those and utilize that. So I'll head over to this planet over here, this ice planet. So I've only got 132. Let's find the equator. Yep. So what I'm going to do is, I might uh, skip it forward here and I'll um, have this world set up for providing graphene and I'll show you the setup for that. Right back. Okay, so skipped forward here and I've set up a furnace ring and chemical plants here for the fire ice. Just doing all the basic resource on the planet. There's not much copper here though, only 253,000, so I'm not going to bother small money in ingots. I'm turning the fire ice into hydrogen and graphene, and then I'm storing all of that via this mini bus into these interstellar logistics stations. Okay, and they're providing this material off world. Mainly the graphene I needed, so. The hydrogen I can burn off on this planet, but I might just leave it on supply and let it fill up and when it backs up I might 
set up maybe like a deuterium on the uh, deuterium excuse me a uh, mini collider mini particle colliders with um, deuterium set up so they transfer the hydrogen into deuterium for me production I think it is here it is miniature particle colliders and I'll yeah turn the hydrogen into deuterium now I've got uh, titanium here, the only thing I'm not making for hydrogen fuel rods, ah sorry, deuterium fuel rods is the super magnetic ring. So that's okay, I need coal for that. Coal, iron and um, copper, sorry. Now I have to set up big engine bays, electromagnetic turbines and then make them. So I'm going to make them because I don't have copper on this board, so I'll just buy this now. My space warpers aren't coming in. They're on remote demand for only 100. You should have bought in about 400, so they're not being made. I'm going to have to fly back over to the other planet, the home world, really quickly now that this has been done. Oh, and fractal silicon, I need to put that in. Sorry, I think that makes the strength. Local demand, remote supply. No, okay. I must be wrong. Okay, so it mines up. Mines it up, and then you must have to smelt it. Smelting facility, yeah, 1.5 second for two. Alright, let's put a little ring for that quickly. So I've allowed space here for more chemical facilities, so I'll build it on the other side here. Pressing O opens up your blueprints. This is my final setup here. I might actually just go like that. Shift enter. I'm sure that belts, which is classic. Down really quickly, just get some belts in here. So that's going to be short, I need probably 800. There we go. So that's going to bring in the most, even if I had that at 500, because one vessel bring is capacity of 400 so well that's because I haven't upgraded them any further so in the technology tree here you can see logistic carrier capacity is plus 100 logistics so that means one carrier one vessel sorry will carry 500 belts so if I set it to request 600 it'll bring me a thousand so I try and just limit to how much I need otherwise it's going to bring me heaps but I'm using 530, so even if I had a thousand, it'd be fine. So I've got 800 here now. They're pretty quick now. I've upgraded the logistics vessel, the speed logistic carrier engine here. So they're pretty quick. And then I need uh, the universe matrix to carry that on. Such as yeah, all of these. I'm not going to do a logistic carrier just yet. Focusing on getting this level 6 done here of the solar cell life. So, when you open the Dyson Sphere uh, interface, bring it to this window. This is the star in this system, and all the information is up the top right. So, star illumination is 0.8, so it's not that great. That's pretty standard, really. 0.8. Um, but you want well over 1. 
So I showed you in a previous episode my ring project ring over here, um, a situla. It's an A-type star, so its luminosity would be, it's over here, it's 1.3. So if I was to build a Dyson Sphere around this, I'd be getting a lot more power than I would off a normal, off a standard uh, standard star, sorry. Okay, completed it. I've done the assemblies here, making the uh, crystal silicon. And I think what I'm going to do is optimize, as you can see, this belt's not even coming in and it's not feeding in quick enough. So, what I might do is go like this. Then I'm going to bring this one in on its own line. Just try and get that little one there. Like that. There we go. So now, sorry, each one is now, each bay of assemblers is feeding into that station on its own belt, which is a lot quicker, but it's maxed out now anyway, so. What are these used for? Here we go. Article broadband. Information matrices. Yeah, okay. So the crystal's not really that but at least now I'm supplying that uh, quite a lot of it so I'm gonna head over to my home planet because our uh, warpers still aren't coming in so let's head over there and find out what's going on the Dyson Sphere is coming along quite well you'll see when we get in uh, to Zubinabu Nubi that um, it's, it's actually uh, completed quite a lot surprisingly so we'll stop short and have a little gaze there we are 
ya nos so you can see the bays are starting to fill out with the solar sails that's what those blue streams are there that's the solar sails being absorbed into the nodes and then dispersed across that section so I'm firing more sails in than has been absorbed and that's because of the carrier rockets I'm not building enough carrier rockets to uh, construct this sphere quick enough but that's okay we'll get there I'm still in a swarm so I'm still using that power to get the uh, critical photons but yes pressing, pressing Y again and having a look here you can see in a bit more detail So the, the nodes use the most recently shot sail and I don't know why they've done that in the game, I'd like to see it patched that the sails being absorbed are the oldest ones, if that makes sense. I mean if you're really that concerned about it you could match how many sails are being shot into orbit that'll get utilised so that way you're using them, you're shooting them up in orbit as you're using them to be absorbed into the sphere, you know. But I don't mind just shooting them up and using using what I need to there and still util, having the generation capacity up here for my uh, ray receivers. So I haven't done any antimatter but I've got, I have, do have a lot of critical photons so I should set that up and I'll probably set that up in my next episode when I look at setting up my uh, my final matrix is the universe matrix okay I used up all of these I think I'll take 60 next time I automated these as well the silos so I've only allowed 10 there which is fine got some more of these Probably two lots I automated nearly everything not, near, not everything, sorry, but I automate most structures, especially these high-end structures over here, like as these things require up to five inputs, well that's four for the launchers, sorry, but you can see the advanced mining machine is five inputs, it's quite demanding resource-wise, so if you just automate that, it just saves a lot of time flying around getting more min uh, resources you require. Um, I put all of these, all of these structures into a interstellar logistics station, and that's so. If I'm like you saw in the last game, I, I saw in the last game, and just the last planet I was on, where I set up for the graphene. Yeah, you, I didn't really show the construction of it, but um, if you go back to my previous episodes, I've shown you how I construct it. But if you run out of material, I just put a station down and request these items, and it brings it out to me. And, can just keep going. So I'll try and take 100 on me. I've still got quite a lot of stackers, yeah. I might top up to 50 though. I'll take 400 of those. I'll take all the belts. All the belts. Never have too many belts. So I keep. As these are being made now, as you can see here, I um, just put the Mark II's in, so that way I'm not making more Mark II's, I'm just putting in what I've upgraded. And you could set out, you could lay, the, lay out your automation queue a bit better so you could have an input box as well of these. Like down the front here, you see these boxes, these feed directly in, so if I have any older Mark 1 or Mark 2 belts, I put them in these boxes and they put they feed them in themselves. But for these I just hand put them in, see they're gone already, so that's fine, I got a hundred on me. Get some more furnaces here. What hundred furnaces? stock up again 
can't forget the logistics stations over here so I automate all these. I've automated, you know, I've shown you these, automated all these. Oh, yeah, it's too quick, it just puts them in way too quick. So if you can, try and just pick out what you need, otherwise you're going to end up with it. <laughs> make sure you, um, also make sure you limit these boxes, because um, on one playthrough I didn't limit how many would be made and I built an entire box full of interstellar logistics stations and I'm pretty sure that did me for my whole game. <laughs> That's a lot. I, just, I was wondering where the materials were, but I should have known. Make sure you just go through all that. So I, I just want to optimise everything now as well. As you can see the carrier rockets here don't have the uh, glass and sphere parts or the uh, yeah, components, sorry. This is where they get made but I'm short on these structures, these uh, frame materials. It's just slow, I need to optimise all that. Here they are over here and it's because um, I'm short on titanium bar. And I think that would come down to my sulfuric acid, to be honest. Um, yeah, see, as you can see, I've got plenty of titanium, plenty of steel. I don't have the sulfuric acid. And these aren't linked up either. I don't know why that is. But it doesn't matter because I'm short. So what you want to do to optimise this, not necessarily create more sulfuric acid. So as you can see, I've got plenty of oil here. I don't have the uh, facility, so I need to pull more of these, double this up. But the other way you could do it is instead of uh, constructing it like I am here with oil, find a planet with sulfuric oceans and then supply that off world. So I'll do that next, and then um, you can change. Uh, sorry, this one over here. This one, here it is. So I built this at the end of my oil queue, you know, like refinery queue. Plastics, and you've got your organic crystals. They're being remote demanded, so I'm making them here as well as remote demanding them. And then all your, your um, refined oil and water. And this is just local supply, so anywhere that needs water can pour it from here. So you can change your sulfuric acid here to remote demand. Okay, and when you get a planet, with sulfuric acid oceans I'll try and show you one really quickly see if I can find one there should be there'll be one right that's actually the optical that's a good planet that's a good dark system one. so the organic grafting crystal kimberlite ore crude oil the spiniform stalagmite they make the nanotubes um, it has water ocean but it's not sulfuric acid so here we go right here to this one it's only six light years it's not far so I'll have a look around again uh, when I do set that up but I could set up this world let's have a look really quick okay it's a B type star so luminosity is probably like a 1 a 1.5 even that's really good too but shit it's called <laughs> sorry sheet I shouldn't really have it. You can see here, look at that. This world 110 wind, 116 solar. So that would be generating a lot of power. Sulfuric acid ocean right here. So this is the planet. So I could set up this entire system with um, smelting rings on every planet and supplying all that material to the star system as well as that sulfuric acid ocean you know so solar here is 130% 129% sorry but which means I'd only need probably one ring of solar panels or maybe two so I'd say probably like you know 700 solar panels which is really really good um, without wind ratio 150% 
This is a... Yeah, it's a good system. But I thought I saw organic... Am I wrong? No? Oh, was a... So I was looking at the other one. Sorry. Down there. The other thing is, don't forget to check your other planet, your other star systems you already have. There might be, ah, uh, yeah, just like that. So, this system here that I already have Chasma Crystal and Carbon Nanotube being built. I'd say it's this one, yeah. Volcanic ash has sulfuric acid ocean on already, so I could just go there. Get this one. Change that name to sulfuric acid. Cool. Well, I'll go and get that and set that up, but I'll do that in between episodes. I'm just showing you guys it's what I would do, I wouldn't try and get more oil here and process it into acid, I'd rather just find a sulfuric acid ocean and, put, and just suck that up with uh, the pumps. And here you can see these, you just use a water pump but it just sucks up sulfuric acid, put it into an interstellar station and put that on supply. Make those titanium bars, optimize that and start feeding that into here. I'll probably double this up. I'll do all that in between an episode, I just want to show you guys the um, Dyson Sphere really in this one. And I've done a bit extra, so yeah. I've finished that stress system, so what you do is over here on the left you click your Dyson Shell. Okay, and now you can see the next, the next level up is now green. So that means I can now uh, build more of the uh, Sphere. So... I've just learnt that now myself too, I was wondering what if I wanted to change the design of my sphere uh, mid build. So I didn't know whether your one layer had to stay the same uh, grid, uh, but it doesn't, you can change it. So I might go through and uh, change it. and. I'll show you guys sort of. I don't mind this one. This one's triangles are a bit bigger, but let's have a look. See, these are quite tightly packed. Um, these ones are on a bit of a different angle, as you can see. They slope. But these are more, uh, say, like more squared up. Anyways, let's do this. Let's go ahead. I'm gonna use the curved one because I'm going to have them a bit closer together. You know, it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be a little odd, but uh, you know what? Whatever. Let's just do it. Okay, and then I'll probably go up. Oh, not that one. Let's just do something different, eh? <laughs> oh, this is out of control. Or well, maybe that's just how I think about it. That one. And then from that one. I don't think I'll go straight because I might change it again on the next one up. Does that make sense? So. <sighs> Alright, what I'm going to do is I'll uh, go forward here and get this complete because it's outrageous. <laughs> oh well, let's do that. Oh, I'll be right back. Just gone ahead and completed setting up these. It looks like trash, but I mean, I'm just trying to show that you can just design it however you want to design it. Uh, so you can design it, you know, properly or multiple layered, or you can do one whole sphere and then do a whole different sphere on a different layer. doesn't actually matter um, if you have a sphere on the outside of another sphere the light still gets to both you can see over here layer one 
you know, it's only got, um, still got to do quite a lot, but generation capacity is 600 megawatt at the moment. Um, and that's with everything planned. Um, so the solar sails will be the main thing bringing it in, but once I complete the sphere, it'll be a lot more efficient. So my warpers, as you can see they're not really being made and that's because I don't have the strange matter coming in and that's due to the deuterium. So I need to find out why I don't have deuterium coming in. I've got all the hydrogen, I mean, you know, maybe I should just build more of these, the, um, maybe set up a mini collider set up, turning all this hydrogen into deuterium. Let's see how that goes, but I'll do that um, in the next episode, okay? Sweet. Okay, well thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode and maybe learned something or just enjoyed watching. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll be bringing out more videos. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.